So I'm going to create a kind of a, ca a basic camouflage generator from Substance Designer. Um, I have it open here. Um, so a basic rundown. I'm going to use tile randoms, uniform colors, blend nodes. Um, I'm going to use all these to create a kind of a basic digital camouflage generator. It's quite simple. So first of all, I'm going to go to n new substance, the graph name. Um, I'll name this camo gen, camo gen, and I'm going to name this add uh, because for whatever reason you can't expose the blending mode variable in Substance Designer. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, create a uh, graph for each kind of blending mode, um, although there will probably be f about four add, subtract, multiply and divide. They kind of do the same thing but a little, 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 bit, little bit different. Um, so camo gen add relative to parent, I'm going to keep all of these all to default. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to press space bar. Um, this brings up the larger menu, right click, uh, you can do it through here as well. Although with spacebar you can search. Blue Unicorn also get the grunge maps in here as well. Whereas if you do spacebar, I don't think you can't you can't get it. So um, for whatever reason, I don't have output nodes, but I mean it's not a big big problem. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is going to get tile random. I'm going to get three of these. I'm going to get three of th mm, yeah three of these. No, I'm just going to keep it one for now. So, what I need to do with this is I need to increase the X amount to 16. Uh, increase the Y amount to 16 as well. For the pattern, um, this is going to be square. Um, keep these all at the default. For the split, I'm going to do none, threshold 0. Size, random X0 and random Y0. Interstice, actually I'm just going to turn this down a bit, turn this down to like 6x6. Six six. So interstice is going to be relative to the largest brick, and turn this down, turn this all the way down to zero. Shape, scale 1, scale random 0, rotation none, rotation constraint true, um, although I'm not going to be rotating so no problem there. Position, i uh, keep this all at default. Color. I believe I can change the color here. Um, I could use uh, I could use a uh, tile random color, but I'm just going to use a uniform color instead. Um, color parameterization. No, I don't. I'm not going to be using color, so. Blending mode, add sub, um, just keep this as this is. Mask, you can do cool stuff with the mask. This is how I'm going to get the uh, digital pattern with the mask. You can invert it as well, change it about. So for the top one, I'm just going to set this at 0 0.5. Also, going to set everything to 32 by 32 now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, I'm going to get a blend node. I'm going to plug this into the opacity. I'm going to get a uniform color. I'll put this up here. The output I'm going to put on the foreground and I'm just going to press D on the keyboard to dock it in the foreground. Just to keep the graph nice and clean. So the blend, I believe I keep these at copy, um, although this one might have to be changed. So, yeah. So you see here we have alpha. Um, I'm going to add another blend in here. Um, this be plugged into the foreground. I'll move this up one. I'm going to get another uniform color. And I'm going to plug this into the background and I'm going to adopt this as well. I'm going to change the color here to white. Just keep things easy. So now the background white is being blended with the black here. The alpha is being filled with the white. 
if I change this to uh, something like adds, this is not going to go well. Subtract, no, not going to go well. Via multiply works. I just keep this on copy for now. If I need to change it, then I need to change it. But for this, I'm going to change the mask value to 0.75. going to focus this by pressing F in the 2D viewport. I'm going to copy this over again. Um, actually just going to undo. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to get another blend node. And I'm going to plug this lower one into the background and the top one into the foreground. I'm also going to change the mask value on this. I might actually invert this. Mm. So I'm going to change this bottom one to a white. So now you see this. going to move this up one. I'll take this into a blend node. I'm going to plug this one into the foreground and this one into the background. And like I said, this will be ads. So if I actually get some colour, this uh, might work it out a little, a little better. So I'll go red for this. Um, for whatever reason, this takes quite a long time to update. I'm not sure what causes that. So you can see this red. This is white. I'm going to change it to a blue. You can see this red and blue. This red and blue is being added with the uh, this this black is just being absolutely covered by. Um, I suppose yeah, it has the same thing. Let, let's just try messing with the mask already here. If I cover it a bit more, would it? Uh, set this to point six two. Hmm. I'm not sure. It should be working. I don't know why it's not. It might just be because of the colour. Uh. Let's set this to a green. So yeah, the, the add mode kind of messes up the whole thing, but you can see the green here, it just gets blended. You can see the green now, it kind of, um, you can see it a little bit better. Let's try and multiply, no. Subtract, no. Divide. Mm. Add sub, no. Overlay, no. Soft light, no. Screen, kind of same as add. But yeah, um, this is the kind of basic camouflage pattern. Um, as I said, this is adds. I'll do one for subtract, multiply, and divide. So this is the final output. What I'm going to do now is I want to expose all these variables so I can take this into Substance Painter and just uh, use this without having to come back in here and, and generate an, uh, another camouflage. Uh, this is uh, it's also pretty good because uh, if I took this into uh, Painter, I could uh, save out the material I created with this. I could just use a color picker, pick some random colors, and then if I like that, I could save that to a shelf. Um, I think that's quite good. So I'm going to uh, expose this for now. I'm just going to keep this as this at X amount. This I'm also going to expose will be under X amount as well. These two also going to expose X amount, and then these two as well. Uh, empty accidentally empty the function. Undo. Expose under X amount and expose this one under X amount as well. 
So now if you double click on the graph, we have Y amount, but it's actually X amount. As you can see, the default is 32, but I can increase this to 64. Um, I'll show a better example of this, so default 64. Uh, so yeah, I can increase and decrease this as I like. Um, the reason why I added them together, the reason why I, uh, yeah, why I have these all on one is because I prefer to have them all, I guess uniform would be the correct one. I want to have these all sc uh, uniform, uni uniformly scale, so having them on one parameter is probably the best here. So I'm actually just going to name this square, mm, I'm going to name this tile amount. This will be the description will be the amount amount of tiles. No, amount of yeah, tiles. Amount of tiles. I just keep there's the description. Tile amount for the descript uh, label group will be no group. Default we set to uh, 1024. Um, you can obviously see from a distance that it starts to repeat itself. Um, you can see here, I have this. If you should go along a little, you'll be able to find this. Uh, so we find this, we find this Tetris, Tetris brick actually. This might be a little easier to find. Uh, unless I haven't passed it, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I thought it it, it, it kind of does look like it repeats itself. I'm not entirely sure about that, but yeah. Default 1024 min will be, I'm going to set to 2 because I don't want, um, actually I'm going to set this to something like 8. Actually the max needs to be 1024, the default sh should be 64. Uh, min, I'm going to set this to 4. So now, total amount, if I change the default to 2 to 4. Actually, you might set this for to 16. The min will be 16, actually. Default 64. Max 1024 clamp true. Step 4. So now. Hopefully it should work. No, doesn't work in here. Oh, quick redo. So I'm going to use a step of four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. It should go up to thirty-two. Can you just calculate quick? Uh, thirty-two divided by four should be a whole number, even number. I mean, so eight, eight times four, thirty-two. Not use that. So uh, I've just exposed the X amount and Y amount. There's uh, not much reason to expose anything in here. The color, position, shape, interstice, size, pattern, or split. Uh, but I can expose the mask value. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I have the correct one set. I'm going to click expose, and it's going to be mask random. Uh, I'm also going to expose this one. This will be under a new function, uh, new one as well. This will be mask random one. This will, this is uh, this that that will be a different one. And then for this one, mask random two.
these will all be their own things. Um, so we're going to also expose the invert, mask invert, we expose this one, mask invert 1, and this one will be mask uh, invert 2. So now the blends don't need to be exposed, however the colours do. Colour mode is just going to set colour, um, I don't want to choose between colour or grayscale, pretty pointless. I could just go in the output colour and choose a grey anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to expose this, output colour, I expose this one, output colour 2, output colour 1, and this one as well, going to expose this, this will be output colour 2. So now everything here is exposed, Every, all these uniform colours are exposed, I'm also going to expose this one. Output colour three. This will this will be the main background colour. So you see there's a white. It goes into a green. The white is the kind of the main background colour here. I kind of messed it up. I could probably do a lot more with this, but I mean, I could probably have like more coverage over the background colour. But I mean, too late now. So these blend nodes don't really need anything exposing in them. You can't really expose them anyway. So yeah. I've got to say really. Ah, the reason. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I don't have output nodes now. It's, uh, I probably feel. Yeah, I should have just chose an empty, empty graph. I should have probably should have chose physical base metallic roughness. Ah, uh, so no. Oh well, I can just create a new graph and copy those over anyway. So. <laughs> so I believe I have everything. Everything I need, need exposed. The mask value, the invert value for the mask, X and Y, all in one uh, parameter there. The colours, all exposed. Nothing in the blends exposed. So yeah, I'm pretty much done. So, output colour. This is green. So this will be, this for, for, for someone who doesn't know what this will be, this will be very confusing. So, this will be top colour. The description will be this. Uh, the description will be top color for camouflage. Actually, just going to say material. And the label will be top color. The color will be the group will be colors. That's it for that. I'm also going to group th uh, copy the group over for this. So this color will be output color three. So this will be main uh, middle background. Um, so this will be top background. I actually need to name these a little bit better. This will be top foreground. Foreground, top foreground, top foreground color, top foreground. This will be uh, bottom foreground. Label bomb for uh, bomb foreground, yeah. Um, this will be top top background. I'm actually just going to copy the description to the one below. Bomb foreground. Actually, just need to start copying and pasting some of these over. So uh, this is fine. Bomb foreground. So this will be bottom background.
label. Just gonna copy and paste the identifier. This is fine. Gonna copy and paste the description for bottom foreground and replace it with background. Remove the capital remove the capitalization on the B. And now we should be on top background. I accidentally have background copied. So top top background name this top back uh, top background. Label top background. So that's that. I'm just gonna move this up. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. So top foreground, top background, bottom foreground, bottom background. So these uh, masks will be might man they might rename them to top. Might have the groups in the top might be a little better. So have like a group named top and have a group named bottom might be better. I will do that. Cause essentially this will be this the, the these nodes will be the top, these will be the bottom. So kind of makes sense uh, if you're not used to not used to this so so like so mask random this is this one so top mask random This is the mask value for the top label will be mask value top and the group will be top. Uh, the invert will I believe this will be the top invert. So group top label top mask invert. This will be bottom. This will also be bottom. So I'm just going to move the foreground to the top and the background to the top. The tile amount can stay on the top here group that doesn't need a group top mask value top mask invert doesn't need really need a description So I'm I can basically copy and paste this stuff. Top mask will random. Ooh, because I only have a variable named this. Hmm. Top mask random. Uh, Might be better to name it foreground. Really, foreground mask random. 
foreground mask value is a bit better. Well, I'm actually just going to stop here. Um, you've seen me expose all these variables. There, there's really n n not much uh, to um, naming this. Um, I won't stop the video because I need to show how I uh, do all the stuff. Like, um, Outputs and stuff, so I'm going to choose physics based metallic roughness. I'm just going to name this new graph. And I have all this, I can just copy and paste this into Camo Gen Add. And move this over. Base color is literally going to be plugged right into that. Uh, so I'm just holding control and, and shift, no, alt and shift. I uh, get these little pin things that I can place about and click and make the uh, graph clean. And I find them quite useful when working on larger graphs. So the thing I can just be strip plug straight into uh, The base color doesn't need any uh, any levels or anything. So for the normal, I need to invert. Uh, no, I need to grayscale. Unfortunately, this is American software. Really unfortunate. Uh, from the grayscale conversion, I need to get a normal. I just plug this right into that. As you can see, we get a little bit of normal information. Um, I'll show you without. So it's nice and flat. Now it's just got this kind of bump texture to it. Um, I probably probably don't need to be generating normals, but anyway, turn the intensity off. The the controls there. If I need it, I can just expose this for uh, the perimeter. Just gonna clean that up. Uh, roughness. Gonna get a levels and drag the output to here so now have control over the roughness here try and find a good angle to angle to show this at so drag the gray might be hard because of the way this is Actually, you see, you see, these these greens are quite reflective. Uh, can't work. So yeah, you can, yeah. So okay, I believe the white value is completely uh, rough. Black value is shiny. So doing whatever, yeah. So yeah, black for shiny and white for complete roughness, which is what I'm going to keep it at. I probably could take this through a sharpen. Let's have a look. Nah, it's just the outputs. Uh, probably just the resolution. I mean, um, that's causing this. Let's, let's let's increase this to 4K. So this is actually really unnecessary. 4K on this, or 4K in general. Especially they just eat up the memory. A couple of colours is eating, uh, eating my memory. They're not not necessarily eating my memory. Well, it's it's eating it eating 1.2 gigs. Uh, on about out of 12 gigs, I guess that's how much is spare out of 16. 
so I have all this. I could put a grayscale conversion on these. Pretty pointless, but I mean it's there if you want it. Metallic again, just I can literally just copy and paste these. So this is weird. I believe this needs to be black. So So yeah, this black is no white is for metallic. Um, so that's that, and then copy this as well. Height, I can plug this in. I'm just gonna go to values, and I'm going to reset all these to the default value. Um. As you can see, height, height information is generated uh, for whatever reason. I'd f well, it's generated. So I believe height needs to be fully black in order for no height information to be generated. I could, of course, just turn height off in Substance Painter, but it's easier just to keep this height black, then I never have any height information. Because I want this to be paint, I don't want any height information. Um, although I could probably just like um, have some create some sort of mask for like paint bubbles, but then again, this will probably go through some sort of like method where there is no height. So again, no need to generate height really. So this is this is the substance, of course. Um, with all these, with all the generated, with all the exposed um, variables, I can just take this into Painter and start texturing. Texturing this pretty easy. Excuse me. Just kind of set this back to relative to parent. So yeah, that's this is a basic rundown of creating a camouflage generator. Um, pretty simple. Um, of course, if I wanted to uh, yeah, like I said, this is pretty basic. Um, so I probably had to go through quite a lot to create something as as good as the proper digital camouflage. But this is this is fine for the job. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the. Uh, substance for the uh, material for the gun